So in the last video I talked about how travel can be the secret to becoming a better photographer but there is one other thing that affects how you take photos and how your final photos turn out. And it's something that a lot of people make a lot of mistakes with and it can ultimately ruin your photos. What is up folks, welcome back to the channel and another video and just before I get into this one, got quite the announcement to make but I'm gonna wait till Christina comes in before I announce it. Here she comes. There she is. Hello. What's the announcement? <laughs> Why am I here? What's the announcement? <laughs> we have an announcement everyone. We do. I said that just for you. Finally! Finally! It is here. The release of our new preset pack! The presets are here. After a lot of um, tweaking and website building, the presets are now available and we call them the Explorer Pack because we've made them over the past three or four years and they've been coming together and I've used them to edit all of the photos that you would have seen in the videos on our Instagram. Um, something I spent a lot of time learning about and tweaking over the years and getting better at to the point where I have a selection of presets that I use for all our photos that I think just work really well for a lot of different scenarios and um, yeah, really happy with them and they're now available if you want them, if you want to um, get them to edit your own photos or support us here or both on the channel and um, you can get them with the link in the description below and you can also check out our new website if you want to take a little browse through and check out my handiwork. <laughs> and to celebrate this new release, we are going to give you guys a little special discount for the first 10 days. So anybody who purchases the presets in the first 10 days will get 15% off. Everybody loves a little discount, don't they? So if you do want to get them, jump over to the website and you'll get them for 15% less. Woohoo! I'll touch on them maybe more at the end, but for now, yeah, presets are available. Check them out. So I actually thought about doing a different video today, but then I thought it probably makes sense to do a follow-up video from the previous one. And this one pretty much follows on from that previous video. So the thing I'm talking about, which can very much affect how you shoot and how your final photos turn out is of course editing. Yes, I know it may seem a little obvious and simple, but it is a lot more important than you may think for a few different reasons. So when you're out shooting, no matter where you are or what type of photography you do, it's important to almost imagine the final photo while you're taking your photo. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say you're taking a nice photo of a landscape or any subject really, it's golden hour, you're looking into the sun. Now to your eye, a scene like that still looks really nice, but through the viewfinder of your camera, because you're having to expose for the sun, which you're looking directly at, it's gonna look pretty rubbish. It's gonna look really underexposed, dull, and probably quite boring through either the LCD screen or the viewfinder in your camera. Now, if you're a good photo editor, you will know exactly what needs to be done to photos like this to bring them back to life, essentially. This obviously applies way more to digital photography because of how we have to expose photos on digital cameras. Now that's just one scenario, but it's the same with any photo you take. If you understand the editing process, what's possible in editing and what can't really be fixed, you then know what to look for when photographing a scene or a subject. Obviously, this goes hand in hand with the camera that you're using, its ability to retain detail and color, etc., which you will understand better by editing photos from that camera. It's all well and good taking a photo of a nice scene or a nice subject, but that raw file will essentially make the photo quite bland and quite boring too. And if you can't bring that photo back to life using editing tricks, it doesn't really matter. Editing is half the process when it comes to creating great photos, especially with digital cameras. So let's take a look at a few examples so I can explain things a little bit better. So this photo was shot in Seville at sunset. There was a strong glow from the sun hitting the side of the church. I really love shots like these in these exact conditions because I know how the final result will turn out even before I get to editing. 
the main thing that I had in my head when I was taking this photo after the composition obviously was to make sure that I didn't overexpose the side of the church. Like I said the sun was hitting it, it was quite bright and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't blow out that area and lose detail and colour. I lowered the exposure just enough so that I wasn't overexposing the side of the building but also I was trying not to underexpose the foreground too much so I didn't push it too far. I knew I could bring back the detail in the foreground and also the colour in the tree. For this one I just made some simple adjustments firstly to get the photo to a good starting point and then I used the spring evening street preset from our explorer pack and that got things looking almost perfect for me. I just added one mask to the sky to adjust brightness a little bit because it was slightly underexposed because like I said I had to expose for the brightest part which was the sun hitting the side of the building. While I was taking the photo I knew that I could make these adjustments and I also knew that I was probably going to use the exact preset that I did use which just makes it easier to imagine the photo in your head while you're taking it. The preset has the built in adjustments that work perfectly for these type of photos so it just makes things quite easy. This photo was taken during our time in Portugal and with this one composition was really important and it took me a few minutes to figure out the best way to frame this one up but when it comes to the look I knew I just needed to get the exposure right and the preset would bring everything else to life nicely and get the colours where I wanted them to be. With photos like these when there is bright sun involved you normally end up underexposing the sky or at least part of the sky but I have made adjustments to the preset which helps fix that and get the sky looking how I like it. And this just makes the edit a lot quicker and easier and as I said before I know what I can do and I know what the presets do so it allows me to almost imagine the final photo in my head while I'm taking it. And here's another example, this photo was took in London on quite a cloudy day. There were little pockets of light peeking through from time to time and I noticed these nice red brick houses across the road. They weren't getting any light at the time when I spotted them but I waited for a few minutes and the light started to break through and hit the face of the buildings nicely. I knew I would have to expose for the face of those buildings so I didn't blow them out and lose detail and colour. I knew the image would look quite washed out but I could bring the colours out nicely as long as I exposed things well. I knew the red brick on the buildings would contrast nicely with the sky if I added a slight blue tint to it. And I knew I could make the leaves on the ground a nice rich colour to emphasise the time of year. And because I hadn't really created a preset in these type of conditions before I was just thinking in my head at the time how I could make it look and I actually ended up making the red brick preset from this exact photo and now in future when I'm coming across scenes like this uh, this time of year I know that that preset will work perfectly because same idea same type of photo and it'll get the same look that I like. This one is quite a simple photo but I actually really like it and again with this one I had the final photo in my head at the time I was taking it and I was also thinking this could work nicely in black and white too. After getting the composition right and getting the strap to sit nicely, which is probably the har hardest part of this shot to be honest, it was really just about making sure I exposed for the highlights so I could keep all the nice texture detail on the bed cover. I knew one of my presets would work really nicely in this one and I actually ended up using the Frozen Fields preset which does sound a bit ridiculous um, but it was the one that worked perfectly and made this edit quick and easy and it turned out exactly how I hoped it would. I literally just had to make a few basic adjustments, lowered the highlights, raised the shadows a little bit and then I put the preset on and that was pretty much it. I also used the classic print preset because like I said I wanted to see what this one looked like in black and white and I thought it would work perfectly and it turned out exactly how I wanted it to nice and contrasty with a bit of glow in those highlights which I really love for black and white photos. I could show you a lot more examples using other presets from the pack but I won't bore you but you get the idea it's pretty much the same with every photo I take. I mean sometimes I take a photo quickly and there isn't much thought about editing but most of the time I have an idea in my head of how the photo could turn out and potentially what preset would really help bring it to life the best. So the point is, like I said earlier, when we take photos with the digital camera, the photo that you open up in Lightroom will probably look quite bland and boring and the key is to know how to take that raw image and make it look as nice as it did to your eye at the time you were taking the photo, if not even better. 
I see a lot of photos on Instagram and also photos from you guys in the Discord and a lot of them are great photos but there's also a lot of the photos that I look at and I just feel like if the person had a lot more experience and knowledge when it comes to editing they could get the full potential out of those photos and it would end up a much nicer photo in the end. Now that's not me saying that those photos are bad, it's quite the opposite actually. It's just more when it comes to the editing process, I feel like they just don't fully bring the image to life, if that makes sense. And I don't mean extensive or over editing, I just mean getting the image to a point where it looks as nice as it did to your eye, and even better. And without sounding like a cheesy commercial, that is where the Explorer pack can come in and help you out. If you skip through the video and you don't know what the Explorer pack is, it's our new preset pack, I mentioned it at the start. I get it. Definitely sounded like a cheesy commercial though, uh, not what I was going for but it is what it is. <laughs> I have spent a lot of time in Lightroom and learning about photo editing and when creating these presets over the past few years to edit all of my own photos, I put all that knowledge, again this sounds like an old sales pitch, but I did put all that knowledge of photo editing into each one to try and get the best results for my own photos in different scenarios. So I know they will help you guys get the most out of your photos and hopefully you can learn something from them too by seeing the settings that I use to edit photos. But anyway, I won't go on and on about it, but if you want to grab the presets, like we said earlier, they will be 15% off. For the first 10 days, the link will be in the description below. And if Discord's your thing, it might be worth your while to jump into the Discord. Uh, I'll say no more. Buying the presets also goes a long way to helping us and the channel and allowing us to keep doing what we do, which is always much appreciated and big thanks in advance. I would love to hear your thoughts on the new website as well. Um, I was kind of faffing about for the last few weeks making it. Quite happy with how it turned out. Um, it's not rocket science these days, but uh, yeah, love to hear your thoughts on it. And one more thing, just before we finish, for the next video, I do want to edit some photos from you guys so uh, I actually did a little community poll a few days ago if you want to check that out um, it explains how you can submit your photos but essentially just email them to macintines at yahoo.com um, if the files are too big just use WeTransfer and if I get enough of them that will be the next video um, so yeah email in some of your favorite photos your best photos or whatever the raw files and um, you might see me editing them in the video. But anyway, that's definitely enough blabbering for this one. Hopefully you found this one helpful in some way or other. I just thought it was a good idea to follow up from the previous video because, yeah, editing super important to getting great final results with your digital photos. And I also thought it fit in nicely with the release of the preset pack. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this one. If you enjoyed it or learned something from it, give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider hitting the subscribe button below. And, uh... As we always say, take it easy, don't be a stranger. Yeah, I think that was all I wanted to say. Well, that's it over now. <laughs>